Picking the right panel is crucial for your project, and there are many things that go into that decision, including location, billing design, local codes and requirements, look, and more. Today, we are taking a deep dive into the SMI inch and a half SnapLock 550 panel and learning about its application, engineering, installation, and when you should and shouldn't choose it for your roof. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett, subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. In this series, we look at a specific profile and discuss when you should and shouldn't use it, installation requirements, applicable engineering, and more. Our profile today is the SMI inch and a half SnapLock 550 standing seam profile. Let's start with the basics. It's a standing seam SnapLock system, which means it's installed with hidden clips and fasteners on the male leg, and the female leg snaps on to engage the panel. It has a maximum 19 inch panel width when it's formed with steel, and a maximum 15 inch panel width when it's formed with aluminum. And speaking of materials, you can use 22 gauge to 24 gauge steel, or 032 to 040 aluminum. If you use the same material in a heavier gauge or a narrower width panel, the engineering is still valid. This panel uses approximately five and one eighth inches of material to be formed. When it comes to slope, snap lock profiles are intended for steep slope applications. They're hydrokinetic systems, which means they must shed water quickly to remain weather tight. Most snap lock profiles have a minimum slope requirement of a 312, but the SMI inch and a half 550 is different. Due to the ASTM E 1646 water penetration testing, SMI allows it to be installed at slopes as low as a 212 based on certain conditions like location and building design. The reason it does so well in testing is that it has a continuous locking mechanism on the male leg down the length of the panel, as opposed to other snap lock systems that only lock onto the clips. We talk about engineering all the time because it uses actual data gathered about the exact panel profile and ensures that if you install your roof per those specifications, you're giving it the best possible chance to perform. For the SMI inch and a half snap lock 550 panel, there are a couple of UL90 construction numbers available, but there are also a variety of engineering specifications from tests performed in a laboratory by Sheffield Metals. The SMI inch and a half 550 panel has been tested in steel over plywood and aluminum over plywood, BDEC, and BDEC with ISO for UL580 and 1897 uplift testing, ASTM E1680 air infiltration testing, and ASTM E1646 water penetration testing. The panel is also rated for class four impact resistance through UL2218 and can be used in a class A fire rated assembly via UL790 testing. For projects located in Florida or Texas, the panel holds both FBC and TDI approvals when using steel over plywood. This panel is eligible for use in weather type warranty projects through Sheffield Metals and qualifies for the standard SMI 40 year PVDF paint warranty and Galvalume warranties. Some upcoming testing for Sheffield profiles includes finishing HVHZ approvals for Florida, upgrading some non-engineered profiles to have testing, and doing even more testing on current engineered profiles. Stay tuned for updates on those. This panel is a good choice for residential or commercial projects with slopes at or above a 212, depending on the conditions. It's a great option when you don't want to use the extra labor to seam panels. The panel is installed faster and requires less labor than mechanical seam profiles, which translates to a less expensive system. It's also a good choice when you want an engineered assembly, if you're interested in a commercial weather type warranty, or when you want testing, but don't want the bigger rib that the similar inch and three quarter snap lock panel has. And because it simply snaps together, it's good for DIY projects if you're planning on taking the installation on yourself. Don't use this panel over open framing at slopes below a 212, or if you think the boxy ribs might look too industrial or bulky. Let's look at how this goes down on a roof. Make sure to follow the engineering guidelines as to what deck substrate you can install over, proper clip spacing, approved accessories, and other additional requirements. I've already fabricated these panels with a one inch bend at the eave and a one inch box at the top, but if you wanna learn how to do it yourself, there's a couple links in the description. On the deck, the panel hooks onto the eave, is pinned on the box end with a couple fasteners, and uses approved fixed clips on the male leg. This bead of sealant prevents siphoning of water at the end of the panel. The next panel hooks onto the eave and snaps in place. It gets pinned as well, and the process repeats across the roof. The tab that I left on this snap lock profile is optional and for aesthetics only. You don't need it, but sometimes it's a nice touch. 
Because the panel is only pinned at the top and it snaps in place, it can expand and contract as needed at the eave. The Sheffield Metals installation details has a great thermal movement chart that shows how much of a gap you should leave at the eave based on the panel metal, deck material, and panel length. Details for this profile are available at sheffieldmetals.com and those details are recommended for both commercial and residential projects. This profile is newer compared to panels that have been in the industry for a long time, so if you're interested in the SMI Inch and a Half 550, double check to make sure it's available in your area. If you want to know more about this panel or other panels that Sheffield Metals offers, I'll link their profile page in the description below. Comment if you have any questions, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett, and I'll catch you next time.